What's up guys, Jimmy here. Today I want to talk about Season 5 and the impact of this new season for the future of Street Fighter. It's quite interesting because it's possibly the most interesting season yet for a lot of different reasons. I mean, obviously there is the V skill too for every character, so that adds a lot to the game. A lot of matchups are different now. You have to like construct a completely different game plan uh, around the V skill too. Um, like most notably recently I discovered that Phenom, Phenom had a really interesting way to play Nikali with a V skill too. Uh, previously, I had played Nikali's. Uh, I could just punish them on reaction when they did the V skill too with a Tatsu with Re, which does work very well. But Nikali can actually punish my fireballs on reaction with the V skill too, and that puts me in a bad spot. So. I really have to rethink this entire matchup. Previously, Nikali did have a hard time with the fireballs. Now, throwing fireballs against V-Skill 2 is bad, but at the same time, uh, the fireball and the V-Skill 2 of Nikali, they really negate each other. You can't preemptively do one or the other, so it completely changes the matchup, which is cool, but it's not even what I want to talk about today. I want to focus on the direction that Capcom is taking with Season 5 because I think it's really important uh, what we're seeing today and how it might actually impact the future of the series because Capcom is actually addressing certain issues that a lot of fans have with the game. Street Fighter 5 has been like a mixed bag for a lot of people and rightfully so honestly the launch was a complete disaster like there's really no other way to put it and the gameplay is not something a lot of people or not not something everybody is on board with i think a lot of decisions with sf5 were great for street fighter in general uh like getting rid of hard knockdowns i think is important i think it's uh, like one of the things that sf5 actually does well but the robbery aspect, for example, it's not something people enjoy very much in SF5. People dislike this idea of inconsistent gameplay, right? And this is something that uh, top players have talked about quite a bit. Not only, like, it's not just about being able to express yourself with, uh, like, certain difficult combos. That's, like, another talk entirely that we might actually do in another video. Because it's pretty complicated to nail this one as well. But... Uh, just the idea that you can press a jab mid-screen, like you want to finish off your opponent because there are no chip kills. I think no chip kills, by the way, is, is not that bad. It's just that in combination with how like you can die uh, jabbing mid-screen by a crush counter, that's something that makes the no chip kill stuff pretty bad, actually. It's stuff like that, that people, where people say, well, we used to play a game, Street Fighter used to be a game where if you if you were the better player you could control the neutral essentially and stay in control of the neutral to win the game and that was supposed to be how you got consistent results right and people uh, argue in a lot of cases that sf5 lacks this kind of consistency and capcom actually addresses this partially at least in season five so one thing that i noticed very early on when i went through the patch notes was the fact that almost every character got a health and a stun buff. And that was something unusual to me, because usually you see it the other way around. Usually when, for example, Akuma did not receive this buff. So I felt like, okay, wait a minute, instead of nerfing Akuma's health, they buffed everybody else's health, right? Uh, it's kind of interesting the way, uh, the way they, they, they did that. And I figured, at first I thought it's a weird way to do it, but then... I also noticed that a lot of characters received nerfs in uh, the stun. A lot of moves don't deal as much stun anymore in Season 5. And that's a big change in combination with the health and stun buff for almost the entire cast. This is a big deal because this is exactly what is uh, going to add consistency to the game. Um, I don't think that SF5 has ever been... A crazy inconsistent game because then you'd see like literal like random players would win tournaments which is not the case it's simply not the case uh, the caliber of players in season 5 like we have so many strong players so many strong competitors that obviously you're gonna see a lot of variation when it comes to the the top eight of uh, any given tournament a lot of people make this argument all the time that 
we should be seeing more consistent top eights in SF5. But I think it's really like a really weak argument uh, if you think about it. Well, if you only have eight top players, well, then like in your fighting game, then <laughs> it's no wonder you see a consistent top eight from one tournament to the other. It might actually be a bad sign, not necessarily, but it might might really be a bad sign that there are no strong players in your game, and then obviously you'll get consistent results. Um, but Street Fighter V, really, you can't compare it to the Street Fighter IV, even to the Street Fighter IV era, which is the era right before this, right? Like, there's no way you can compare this. Uh, there are so many more players playing right now and playing to win right now. It's unbelievable. And this is really a result of technology catching up. It's so much easier to find the resources to get good at the game and uh, to manage it as a job. I mean, just streaming and uh, there, there's so many new ways uh, to generate revenue within this this industry that it's it's a much higher probability some players will actually try to compete for real and and be really serious about this and I don't think this can be uh, overstated so yeah that being said season 5 does add a lot of consistency through these changes through the stun like the, the, the increased health and the decreased stun values on moves. And this should really lead to the most interesting season yet. People always try to figure out, okay, like who's the best player in the world? And at the end of the day, you can argue, well, a lot of matches come down to this one guess, this one 50-50, and if you guess wrong, you died, right? And I'm very curious to see who's going to end up on, on top in Season 5, who's going to win the big tournaments this year, because the the change will add, will make it so that every top player will need an extra read to finish off the opponent. And this really should add a lot of spice to the matches. People should be very motivated to maximize every opportunity that they get, like to really try to be better than the opponent and i'm sure we're going to see a lot of interesting moments as a result i can't wait for season five to really start once the tournaments start to roll in like the olympic stuff should be crazy i can't wait to see that happen and uh, i think overall like season five is going to be a blast it's going to be the best season yet uh, I, I don't think there's any doubt about that uh, in my mind at least, and what's even more interesting is the potential for the future. I've uh, mentioned the future a couple of times now. Street Fighter 6, I'm really wondering, are we going to see it next year? People have been speculating a lot on Street Fighter 6, and if we're going to see it next year for the next generation of consoles, then I gotta ask myself, okay, with the current changes for Season 5, is this something that Capcom has in mind for the next generation? I mean, we've seen stuff like Omega Edition in Street Fighter 4 as a testing ground, essentially, for Street Fighter 5. This has been speculated before, and it was true, indeed. Uh, a lot of moves that were in uh, Omega Edition in Street Fighter 4 did make it to Street Fighter 5. It should be interesting to see if the influences of Season 5, the direction that Capcom is taking at the moment, is this going to influence Street Fighter 6? If that's the case, then Season 5 is really a great sign for the future. As I said, consistency is really important if you're going to market your game as a competitive title, as something that you want to go to a tournament and show you're the best, right? And I think if Street Fighter 6 manages to take a look at what's currently done in Street Fighter 5 and build on that as a foundation, uh, I mean, we're, we, I mean, at this point, I can only speculate, right? There's probably going to be way different mechanics, but still, overall, I'm happy that Season 5 doesn't add craziness to the game, but the, the opposite, consistency. And uh, this should be really healthy, not just for the community right now, but also for the future. And I can't wait to see what, they, what they're going to do if Street Fighter 6 is indeed a real thing. But yeah, definitely let me know what your experience is with Season 5 in the comments below. Maybe I'm just being a little bit too optimistic because Ryu just got buffed and I feel good about the season. Maybe you have a completely different experience 
as I said, there's a lot to, to, like, a lot of angles to take with all of the new V-Skill 2s, the complete rebalancing of the game. Uh, some characters, like uh, Vega, even got a new move, right? Let me know what your experience with the game is so far. And I, I know, like, I know I haven't really talked about the online. The online has been pretty bad the last couple of days. But honestly, this is always the case. Every time there's a new patch, the online feels uh, worse and worse and this is why I don't really want to talk about it anymore because at this time like it's really expected so unless you're playing with the the netcode patch uh, you're probably having a bad time at the moment uh, but yeah still let me know what you think about season 5 so far and before I end this video I do want to talk about one thing that I do think is problematic and I think needs to be changed so earlier I said I'm happy Season 5 is adding consistency to the game instead of more crazy stuff, right? And for the most part that's true, but there's one uh, exception to this rule, and that is unfortunately Rashid. It's kind of amazing how Rashid managed to dodge the crazy nerfs. I didn't really see that coming. I really thought they were going to over nerf the character, but they didn't do that at all in my opinion, and the V-Skill 2 is really messed up. Like, it's unbelievably messed up, actually. It's something that I didn't really expect. I don't think the V-Skill 2, the V-Skill 1 of Rashid is that strong to begin with, and I think he received potentially the best V-Skill 2 in the game, and that's a bit surprising to me. I didn't really see that coming, and I think they really need to have to change that. I, I didn't really play a whole lot of Rashids. This is something that I have to be honest about. And uh, I saw this clip of Daigo having massive issues dealing with the V Skill 2. And I thought, at first, I thought, I didn't really think about it too much. I just thought, ah, it's the first time Daigo is playing this V Skill 2. He has no clue, but he'll figure out a solution. And then when I played a Rashid for the first time playing V Skill 2, I couldn't figure it out. Like, I really, I tried so many different approaches and. Like, I couldn't figure it out. I felt completely lost playing Rashid. And, like, this could be a problem for Season 5. Maybe I just haven't, like, maybe I just have not figured out a solution, honestly. This is a possibility, but as far as I can tell, there is no good solution to this move. You have to take a big gamble every time he jumps, and this will add inconsistency. There's no doubt about that. This won't just add inconsistency. Like, Rashid can flat out ignore the neutral game with this tool. He can turn every jump into a major guessing situation that's in his favor. So, the optimal way of playing Rashid might actually be just to keep jumping all the time and doing the V skill and different variations for it until you win. And, like, honestly, maybe I sound like a scrub saying this right now. Honestly, I wish I could take a look back at this video and uh, say, <laughs> take a look at um, my 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 past self uh, talking about this V skill, even though there is a clear solution to this. I would love to know what your thoughts are on the V skill two of Rashid. Am I the only one that just doesn't know how to deal with it? And once again, to be clear, I have not played against a whole lot of Rashids in season five, so maybe there's something I'm missing here, and I wish. I knew what the solution was at the moment. Definitely let me know in the comments down below what you think about this. But in general, as I said, Season 5 I think is amazing. It's not just amazing for now, it might actually have an impact on the future. And um, yeah, I can't wait to see what's going to happen throughout this year. I think there are going to be some crazy announcements if this next generation thing becomes reality. I can't wait to see what Capcom has in store for us. So yeah, guys, thank you so much for watching. Take care, and I'll see you soon.